All right, well, g'day, it's John O'Break here. I'm here with Mark Phillips, and we've got the amazing May King. We had May King on a, on a call with us last week. If you missed it, go back and grab the recording. It was, it was really cool. Just look at that smile. I mean, she's just all <laughs> smile. We had to hold off on the live stream. She wouldn't stop smiling. She wouldn't stop laughing. We said, <laughs> we can't have fun here, you know. We <laughs> and so, uh -huh. and so uh, that's not true at all. Otherwise, she wouldn't be talking to us, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's and exactly so, right. I'm going, to, I'm going to let Mark do a quick intro. Mark's uh, now making longer than, than I have. I've known her for all of a week. Um, and, I'm, <laughs> and it's been a fantastic, it's been the best week ever. I mean, honestly, it's Aww. been amazing. So, um, but I'm looking forward to more conversations. But uh, Mark, um, love you to do a bit of an intro. Yeah, 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 fantastic. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because we all have this Australian connection, yet today, none of us are in Australia. Uh, <laughs> That's very I, true. I, That's I, right. I mean, I, yeah, making you and I were sharing a stage about women entrepreneurs some seven or eight years ago up in Noosa, um, beautiful part of Australia, about yeah. 100 kilometres north of, of Brisbane. I think you were living in Brisbane at that time. That's right. Uh, you, were, you were running an amazing um, women's uh, um, entrepreneurial program. It's a Facebook group. Program. Yeah, Facebook group and, and associated stuff. You also had your little uh, making tea um, business running on the side, which is just an amazing sort of, um, you know, concept and, and a beautiful alignment of names and so forth. But um, I, I remember we had we had fun. We, you know, there's Noosa for those who haven't been there. You know, it's a smallish town, 30,000 people. It's not the big city. It's not necessarily the the. Um, just the don't tell me for that. Oh, I, I tell them all the time. <laughs> One of the most beautiful parts of the world. It's got yeah. the ideal climate and um, home to many rich and famous for, for those that uh, you know, want to go for a great holiday one day back to Australia. Um, but, you know, absolutely stunning. But um, the, the locals there have the same issues that many remote people have around the world. That they, they feel isolated. They don't necessarily have a great range of people to call on nearby. Um, and so this is a bit of a theme that we run in business in bare feet. Yeah. We're, we're reaching out and helping people that don't have a great depth of community, particularly entrepreneurial community around them. Yeah. So um, on that note, that's, that's my, my uh, three-minute uh, introduction to May King, who is now based in the UK, in Sheffield in the UK. I'm going to hand back to Jono. Yeah, so, so one of the things that really struck me last week, and I think, you know, we've, we've run this entire business, uh, we run this entire business online, right? And we really depend on a particularly social media um, to run our business, to connect, to connect with our audiences, both in the freemium uh, products and, and then also in the, in the, uh, the higher level stuff. And so, which I believe making's becoming a mentor. Am I correct? Is that, am I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And, uh, <laughs> And, um, but uh, this one particularly piqued my interest because social media is something that we all rely on. And, and, and after talking to May King, I think we all do it really badly. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I know that wasn't your intention, but, but you know, there's so much spruiking of social media. I don't know if you're, you know, we're all on LinkedIn, right? And, and every second day I get a, I can land you 500 clients and hundred thousand dollar clients. Just, just, yeah, just, Give me a credit card. Yeah, right. Thank you. That's why I never connect with them. And uh, and so anyway, making uh, without further ado, I'd love you just to very quickly introduce yourself, what you're on about, and then we're going to get into this concept called FOMO, which uh, I'm really intrigued to hear more about. You touched on it last week, and uh, and I think our audience will will really appreciate it. So. Over to you. Awesome. Well, um, I, uh, I'm going to start with a little story first, because um, when I lived in Australia, people insisted on shortening my name, but my name is May King. And, uh, and of course, people wanted to call me May, which I completely understand. But in Australia, I, I definitely didn't want to be called May, because then they'd give me the name Mayo as a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want that, do I? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so in Australia uh, to appease the people there because they, they couldn't really understand the whole concept of making two names uh, hyphen I said okay just call me Maisie like Jay-Z uh, I'm the social media rock star and that that's what I called myself back then but um, when I came back to the UK in 2016 I, um, I insisted on making because I actually use it as part of my branding uh, so I'm on all the socials as making tea uh, so making making tea get it um, and I use social media um, in Australia um, I moved out there in 2010 and didn't know a single person so I built my business from scratch, and um, and yeah, uh, as Mark said, we shared a, a stage in Noosa. Um, I appeared on TV and radio, newspapers, local newspapers. Uh, appeared in uh, three books about tea uh, uh, there, and I did that in a short space of about three, four years. Uh, lived in Australia for six years, and then immigration said I had to go home. Boo! <laughs> then I had to rebuild my business again we, we, uh, in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, because I've been away, um, I had to rebuild my business again, but using all the mistakes that, well, leaving the mistakes behind that I made in Australia, but learning from what I had created in Australia, I had to come back and rebuild my business again. And again, within uh, two years, appeared on TV, appeared on radio, uh, using uh, similar techniques. And um, now um, I, didn't mean to sound uh, like I was um, uh, telling everybody off about using social media, you know, that they're using it wrongly, because there are some businesses who are doing it really well, um, doing it really well, but there are a lot of businesses who are doing it um, not very well. And I think from our last conversation, Jono, we were talking about how, and this was not recorded, uh, I think, uh, we were talking about how marketing has really proceeded over the years, you know, when people go in business, um, they remember how business used to be, which is a one-way communication, billboards, white pages or yellow pages, TV, radio, and it's just a broadcast. Right. And so that's what people use social media for. They are publishing and say, hey, look at us. These are our services. These are our discounts. These are our products. Yeah, I think, I think the thing I was saying to you was that, uh, yeah, you go onto the average website and it tells you everything about, like, let's say you came onto my business website and say, I believe this and I do things this way and I'm different because and we do this and which is okay in your about us section, right? That's where yep. it's supposed to be. But it's all yep. over their connections and, and their socials and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's very much about them and not the customer and telling their stories. Exactly. So the people who are doing social media really well are those who remember why you went into business in the first place. You know, it's about your customers. It's about the people that you're serving. It's not got out to do with you. Your bit's in the about section, but everything else is about making a difference, making that impact with your customers, prospective clients, and people who are watching your social media content. So um, in a lot of the talks that I do, I, um, I always use the phrase of uh, create content for the lurkers because there's a lot of people lurking. We're all lurkers, aren't we? We do it. Well, we it, it. Well, that's interesting, right? Because how many people, like you might catch up with someone you haven't seen in a while, they oh yeah, yeah, I've been watching what you've been doing on Facebook. It's like, oh, have you now? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, people, and again, you know, there's a lot of mistakes that people make in social media. And I'm not here to call anybody out because I made those mistakes as well, right. you know, where we get obsessed with how many fans or how many followers we have, you know, how many connections we have have on LinkedIn those are not the metrics that we should be concerning ourselves with it's about making that impact and it's the lurkers that we need to concern ourselves with you know and we don't know who they are until we have a conversation with them right so you know we if we consistently create good content then we will get those clients who come in and we will get those queries that uh, come so in. I've heard this used a lot consistently create good content what is good content Good content is going back to uh, your customers. So, you know, what problems are you going to be resolving for your customers? But even before that, even before that, um, it's about branding. So I, when I do my talks and I'm, um, you know, mentoring uh, clients, I will ask them. So I'll, uh, actually, I'll ask you, Mark or Jono, what was the last thing you bought? Uh, <laughs> Probably a beer down the pub. <laughs> a beer yes. down the pub, yes. right? Uh, Amazing. Right. Now, why? 
<laughs> Why did you buy that beer from the pub? Because it was Why called that Wombat be? Warrior. Uh, no, because uh, we were enjoying ourselves. Linda and I were out. Um, it was a Saturday afternoon. We wanted to sit down at this nice location. We wanted to soak up the ambiance. We wanted to do a bit of people watching, a very French thing to watch people walking past and see what they're doing. With, we're all snoops. Um, <laughs> it's very pleasant to drink a beer. Um, actually, I ended up switching to Chardonnay um, because um, Linda had a really nice Chardonnay, but the, the impact was exactly the same. It was about enjoying ourselves in this beautiful day in a, in a magnificent uh, little French town. So why did you go to that particular place? And there's a reason why I'm asking all these questions, by the way. It's not just because I'm um, nosy. <laughs> certainly. So, so we're relatively new to this town. Um, and the previous week we had tried a different bar. And so we went down to this bar to test it for the first time. Right. Okay. So, um, so you're on that journey of discovery, weren't you? Yes, so you absolutely. went to have a look, had a bit of an exp uh, exploration. And um, Jono, what was it that you bought? So um, I, bought a, I bought a, I bought a beer, like so we talked about. Crash helmet, crash helmet. And I've got one of them, man. I haven't landed on my head yet. So <laughs> it's, I need crash helmets on my elbows and shoulders and everywhere else. Um, but did you so, buy that online? Sorry? Did you buy that online? The helmet? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, but I hunted for the bike online originally. So it was actually where I, where I got my son's bike. He gave us a couple of helmets. Oh, amazing. Um, amazing. Yeah. So um, the reason why I'm asking all these questions is because... It's like we did buy online because we have a lot of summer camps. I was always talking about bikes for a sec. He, he, we have a lot of summer camps here, you know, the, the, the American summer camps. And every fall, they clear out a lot of their, their bikes because they replace them, you know, at least once, if not twice, you know, yeah. every second or, or every year. And yeah. so, yeah, we went down and, and you get them at a great price. And Amazing. Uh, we went down to the camp and bought Charlie his bike and, and he gave us a couple of helmets as part of it. So. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. So the reason why I'm asking all these questions is because um, I'm asking you as a consumer, okay? And it, we, we all like shopping, right, from time to time, uh, sometimes and sometimes we don't. But if we think about what we do, we tend to do a bit of research or we, you know, we um, figure things out or we explore and so on. And so if you think, as a, think like a consumer, then you need to deliver content like a consumer. So you need to think about your uh, customers and think about well, what problems am I going to resolve? What are the questions that they going to have and how can you resolve them? So it's not about, you know, and, uh, uh, for some of us, we buy things from certain companies or certain brands because we know who they are. We like them, we trust them. But if you are in business for the first time and people don't know who you are yet, you just can't, you can't go for the sale. You can't say, here are my discounts. I can give you 5,000, you know, cl uh, guaranteed clients in like three months, sign up now, because I don't know who you are. I don't know who, I, uh, who you are. I don't know whether I like you. I don't know if I trust you, you know. So... We need to do, we need to give that content, put that content out there to prove that we are good at what we're talking about and we can help people as much as possible. So, um, and then if they really want to know more information, they can go to the website and check out your frequently asked questions and, you know, and your testimonials and this, that and the other. But that's what I mean by good content. It's about helping your customer to uh, get to the answers that they're want, trying to get to. Fantastic. So you use this term FOMO. Right. Um, let talk me through that one, or talk us through that one. Sure. So, um, you know, social media. A lot of people are doing it well. Some people not so well, as I, I talked about. And there's a lot of people who are uh, doing some of the things that I talked about, where they're providing great information. Um, they are, you know, putting out testimonials. And they are putting out photographs uh, to showcase, you know, uh, what they've done after uh, the event. What FOMO is, and FOMO means a fear of missing out. And uh, in the Urban Dictionary, uh, it's described as, you know, that fear feeling of anxiety uh, that when you see something um, and in a business context we want people to feel anxiousness because we want them to think oh my god yeah I do want that thing I do want that service and that's what FOMO is so FOMO is kind of like the next level up from social media so what you've done so far on social media if you are active on any of the socials LinkedIn um, you know Twitter Facebook and Instagram uh, what you're doing is great but we're going to take it to the next level. And the next level is this idea of FOMO where 
we want to really go deep and uh, deep and dirty with the behind the scenes of your business and showcase quite openly what you're doing, how you're doing it, how you're resolving it. So whereas a lot of people tend to take a photograph, um, you know, of, um, you know, maybe take a selfie with somebody or, you know, like a Zoom call that we've just done, you know, and they'll tend to write, and there's nothing wrong with this, just had a great conversation with blah, 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 and then post, okay? Which is great, but what did you talk about? You know, what did you actually talk about? And that is what FOMO is, okay? So we want to showcase our expertise by telling people who we've, been, who we've met, who we've discussed, what problems we've resolved, and that kind of stuff. And you can do that through video, you can do that through blog posts, uh, you can do that through, um, you know, a series of photographs, you can do that through a slideshow. That's the kind of thing. And one of the things that I often talk about is um, creating your own Truman Show. Now, do you remember the film, The Truman Show? Yeah, actually, it was actually filmed not far from here. Oh, really? Oh, is that incredible? Amazing. Um, so with The Truman Show, for those of us who are uh, not in our uh, 40s, um, it was a film by uh, Jim Carrey in the... Yes. You're giggling away there. Have I, I flattered you there? <laughs> Um, so uh, Jim Carrey, uh, an incredible film in the early 90s and uh, he didn't realise that he was owned by a TV station and so everything that uh, he did in his life was filmed and uh, life was, you know, about, everything was filmed and people were watching, people were lurking, people were, you know, were sort of uh, engaging with this reality TV show and that's what we need to do in our business, we need to create our own Truman Show. Now you can decide what you want to put out there and what you don't, yeah. but it's really giving uh, an insight into who you are, what you're doing, who you're talking to, um, you know, what, cl what client work you've done, and it just gives a bit more uh, information. As we know that, I mean, there's lots of stats that have been put out there, um, but, for a prospective client, they need to look, see your stuff between seven and 30 times before they even make a decision as to whether they want to click on your um, website. So if they need to see you seven, between seven and 30 times, we need to vary that content. You can't just put photographs and, you know, you can't just put um, testimonials or uh, quotes, which seems to be, a, a, you know, um, a popular thing. We need to do more than that. We need to work really hard to, you know, help people by, um, you know, answering their questions. And a lot of my content is uh, based on, um, you know, conversations that I've had, you know, private message on WhatsApp. And I think, oh my gosh, I'm going to share this with my audience because someone's asked me a question and that will be really useful to, you know, a lot of them, you know, a lot of my followers. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So, so the, the, the FOMO piece, the fear of missing out. So I always get a little bit irked when I hear the word fear in everything, in anything, because obviously fear is a, is a negative thing, but, but I actually get it in the concept of FOMO and I get it in terms of what you're saying, right? Because it, it really brings a, it's actually not about the fear piece. It's actually bringing those beautiful stories out and sharing them with the world because they're worth sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, we are, um, we're in the world of reality TV and regardless of whether we you know, whether we in, as individuals watch them or not, they're very popular and they're popular because we're incredibly nosy. So, you know, let's create content so that people can be nosy. <laughs> you know, let's create con content that is, um, you know, that's nosy worthy, you know, that people want to binge watch our stuff. You know, Instagram stories are amazing. It's like your own dedicated TV show. And, um, you know, you need to be educating, um, you know, edutaining, you know, educate people because we can't just get to the sale. People need to get to know us and uh, get to know us as a person. If they like us, then they may want to find out more. And if they find out more, then, you know, that's where you can educate them about your business. And then, you know, and there's nothing more powerful than other people telling the world how amazing you are, as opposed yeah. to you telling the world how amazing you are. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but in those genuine ways, right. I, I, um, I try and get video testimonies from my clients and things like that. Yeah. But, 
but but video and that whole interaction done right has has almost replaced a lot of the the sort of the awkward lead generation stuff if you do it right right in the sense that it's almost like um, so let's say I was following whatever it is you're doing and I'd never met you and we then talk face to face it's like oh I already know you right That's whereas exactly right. The reality is I don't um, and this is this is the way you know this is the way celebs and that have been doing it brands have been doing it for, for decades um, yeah so it's really it's really available to everyone that's exactly right and you know there needs to be a balance though as i say you know um because we are all um you know on social and people you know want like i say they want to get to know us as a person before our business um so you know give them an insight into who you are so today for example i put something on uh instagram and i uh literally copied and pasted it and put it into Twitter so I can get more reach, right? And um, I received a wonderful gift, a wonderful gift through the uh, post box. And uh, my mum thought it was for her, but it wasn't, it was for me. <laughs> anyway, she ended up taking some of it anyway. So it apparently it was for her uh, in the end. So, you know, what's that got to do with FOMO? Nothing, but it shows a little bit of an insight into um you know into my life and uh uh it was a gift from um a a company whose software that i use so i wanted to showcase their stuff so you know on social media it shouldn't just be about you it should be you know the people that you're interacting with or your clients certainly you know so um so that little bit of humor where again suddenly apparently my mom it's my mum's uh, water bottle not mine anymore um it makes people giggle but it actually in you know invites people to have a conversation with me yeah. and then you never know what the conversation leads and that is the power of um creating fomo yeah so, that's very cool um that that works a lot for an individual, particularly those new freelancers and, and people starting their first business, whether they like it or not, there's a lot of that going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. What about if you are a small brand? If you are a brand that has got a level of trust within your little microcosm that are trying to grow, how does a brand go and create personality like you were talking about? Well, your business probably has a few people working for them, right? Mm -hmm. So then they can also, you know, they can also showcase what it is they do um, because, you know, and even a, you know, an entrepreneur, if um, as they're growing, they'll be outsourcing their work. So, you know, in, in effect, they've got a team of people too, so you can bring them into it. So, you know, um, whenever I have a meeting with uh, my videographer, he's incredible he does some incredible stuff so i bring him you know into my network i want to show the world how amazing he is because mm -hmm. i want you know because i don't want to you know i don't want him to be the best kept secret i want other people to um you know to hire him um and uh, and you know because he's done some incredible work for me so i just want to share the love so for a brand for a business that has two or three employees definitely showcase what they do and what you know and how important they are to the community but as i say it's more it's really more about the customers and what impact you're uh, you know you're having so you know i've been hired uh, for uh, events um uh, both in person and virtual and um and you know and they'll be you know a company of you know 10 people or, or or however and they've hired me to create that fomo so they want to showcase uh, and FOMO is kind of like bridging the gap between social media and PR because you want to show how amazing your event is, okay, and let everyone who is in that event to tell the world how amazing you are. So traditionally, um, with a lot of conferences and a lot of events, you'll get the conference organizer, he'll go around with a, you know, with a mic or a videographer and they'll say, hey, can you give us a testimonial? And a lot of attendees, if they're not familiar with video or they're w w worried about video, they'll, they'll kind of look in funny in headlights and say, yeah, I like this conference because, and it's a kind of a stilted testimonial, right? Yeah, I call them, I call them wooden, you know? Yeah, like, that's right. Yeah. It's frozen like wood. Yeah. That's exactly right. 
But rather than getting that testimonial at the end, because a conference has already happened, why not show bits and pieces of the conference in between? So that's why I'm hired, because I will, um, I tweet on average 1,200 tweets a day. I can do 100 Instagram stories. Um, I did an a virtual conference. There were 22 speakers. I tweeted, and then I created a live blog post for all of those speakers and popped it onto LinkedIn and that's what we want people to see you know we want to see oh my gosh this conference is amazing I need to go and get the you know I need to get the uh, tickets for the next uh, next year's event so going back to that between 7 and 30 uh, touch points you can do that all in a day in a few hours you know if you hire someone dedicated to create live content right mm -hmm. now for your meeting, your masterclass, your workshop, your festival, your conference. And, and if we were to look at ambassadorial programs and so forth, we see this being quite common with, with big brands. They go and appoint some people that have a, have a reach or a personality. It's the same sort of thing, isn't it? They're, they're, they're using somebody else's personality and those personalities are digging into the, the bowels of the, uh, the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and people have started to hire me as a, you know, mini influencer, um, because they know that my audience will be interested in some of the stuff that I've done, you know, and for those who don't know who I am, that's okay as well. Because as I say, I enable more reach and more uh, invite people to comment and share, you know, the, the live content I create. That's one of my special, you know, my superpowers to be able able to listen think of you know think and listen to what's been said and then posting it straight away uh, and my other superpower is interviewing people so you know rather than sticking a mic in front of someone and saying what are your you know what do you think of this conference it's more about the attendee so I will ask who are you you know give them a bit of publicity for their business you know who are you what is your name uh, what do you do uh, why are you here? What were your biggest takeaways? And where can we find you? You know, that's the kind of thing that we can uh, really create. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it does. And, and I think, you know, it, it really um, it really brings social media back to what it was originally designed for, and that is a dialogue. Now, I, I know I, I, heard a, I heard a really interesting conversation, particularly around the, the Black Lives Matter sort of stuff that's been going on here in the US or around the world now. And, and somebody said, you know, we've create, we've, uh, we've um, exchanged conversations for clicks and likes. And, and to me, to me in social media, the real success is, is are people actually not just liking something? Are they, are they doing something else? Are they conversing back? Are they sharing it? Are they, you know, that's so, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But, but that conversation, allowing people to share their stories as well on, even in the middle of your story. And I love that quote because, um, you know, I, um, I, I put a, um, a video out on YouTube on how you can create FOMO for your own business. And one, I think one of the slides in, in that uh, talk, I, I mentioned about how you should reply, not like. You should comment, not share. Because if, if there's a post that's gone out there and you like it, then your name, has disappeared in amongst the other 20 people or 30, 50, 100,000 people who've liked it. However, if you comment on it, then that already sets you apart from everybody else, right. okay? Yeah. If, you've, what, if you've read a, a blog post or watched a video, okay, and you haven't liked it, you haven't shared, you haven't uh, retweeted or anything like that, then um, how does the creator of that video know it's any good? Why don't you say thank you? You know, so when we are talking to people, you know, when, when we are allowed to go out and, and, you know, go to a party and what have you, or a networking event, um, you know, when someone introduces you, you don't just smile, you'll engage in a conversation with them, won't you? Um, right. Or you'd say, oh, you know, I agree. And this is why, so do that. And that will already set you apart. Now, a lot of people think, oh, it's too, it's too much hassle, can't be bothered. Well, if you can't be bothered, then you're clearly not bothered about your clients, you know, yeah. engaging in conversation. Remember, when you are talking to somebody on social media, you're not just talking to that one person, because so many of us are lurking. 
So if you come across as a really nice person by giving gratitude, by um, you know showcasing how incredible this blog post was or this video was, you know, then you're more likely to be remembered than someone else who's just done a like or a share. And I'm not judging anybody, by the way, um, for people who share and like. You know, some people um, genuinely don't have time. That's okay. Some people are scared. Some people are worried about what you know what to say um they're worried about being judged um and i have had people who will say to me on you know on private messages making what what do i say someone's just said something to me um what i say to you is if that person was in front of you what would you say to them and like you said jono it's all about having a conversation right, right. that's all it is social media is just a two-way conversation. But I wonder if this is then a, an extension. I like, I, I'm in the you know the people and leadership space, right? And so I wonder if this is an extension of personalities too. So clearly, you enjoy a good conversation, and you're very good at carrying it off. And and you've probably also either been naturally gifted, but have trained yourself to look for intriguing questions, right? As I have as a coach, and and Mark does as well. Mark asks, Mark's you know particularly when it comes to a business, he's particularly good at at sort of homing in on the stuff that you know, the questions that need to be asked, the stuff that's not being answered or whatever. And so the challenge out there is though, those people who like, you know what, I don't really want to have a conversation. Um, I don't want to talk. I don't want to be social. So, you know, how do we, how do we deal with those people? Did we lose her? Oh, I think she, she might be frozen, but um, hopefully we'll come back. Yeah, no, it's an interesting conversation that one. Um, how do you deal Very with the people that yeah. Yeah. are introvert, particularly that are not quite sure, they don't want to necessarily expose right. themselves? And, and so, social media is that perfect platform, in a sense, for them, um, maybe meeting some unresourceful needs, but meeting a need nonetheless. And so, they can also be the ones that then are very loud yeah. behind the texting, but you know, more, she's gone completely now, but we'll have her back in a minute. So we'll just, I mean, you came to see us anyway, right? So <laughs> <laughs> we know they did, Mark. We know yeah. that. It's and, interesting uh, know, because what, what Mike King was talking about is what we were filming, what, five years ago in the States when we, before you'd moved there, we, we had these great the stories. Yeah. 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 Fabulous stories. Yeah, they yeah. were. They were. They still are. <laughs> We've still got them all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the, pro the problem is, of course, when they're business stories, it's like how, how, how long do they last, right? And uh, that was human stories. It was about people going through the right. life of creating a startup. It wasn't, wasn't this, you know, we purposely chose not to profile the really high-flying, successful people. No, well, I think that's always been the endearing quality of what we do here is that the stories are very genuine and very real. Hey, welcome back. And, uh, and, um, and that's to catch up with Dave Lowe, well, for instance. It was interesting. We we're just while you dropped out, we had a chance to reflect on the last thing that you said. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was interesting because when we, when we first started getting together, Mark and I, you know, shacked up, and uh, you know, we, we even were accused of being drag queens one night. Oh, don't bring the drag queen thing into it again. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other story, and um. But, but we, we came through to the US and we did the same in Australia. We went and just interviewed early stage and some, actually they weren't all early stage, they were all over the place, entrepreneurs. No, no, right, yeah. uh, that, you know, we had Dave Lowe on uh, last week and he was one of our guys that we, we met in, in Austin and, and we, they, we just got them to tell their stories and weave that into a narrative because one of the things that we've always been on about a business in bare feet is, we want real entrepreneurs telling real stories, not your multi-billionaire. It's like the, you know, as I say, it's not like your multi-billionaire who goes, oh, that was such a tough experience. Yeah, it was really hard. And it's like, you're a billionaire, shut up. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, so, and so, you know, like it's, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with being a billionaire, by the way. <laughs> um, these guys deserve it, totally deserve it. And they don't have an easy life being, having a lot of money. That, that's just the, the big fallacy, but... Uh, but but the point being is that we want real people who are doing real stuff today, and that's something we're very you know with the mentors that we bring into this community, uh, you know people like yourself who are just in the trenches, but are also excelling at what they do. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I, I, I think before um, I um, uh, I left the broadcast, um, 
you were alluding to, um, well, the fact that we are mentors and coaches, we're able to ask those questions. Yeah. And I think you, you were wondering uh, what, you know, so those people, people who are not used to position of I, either I don't have the right to speak up, I don't want to speak up, or I just want to click like, you know, and you said, I mean, that's, that's okay. That's what you want to do. But, but you know, it, it, it is very much about how we see these real conversations. We actually kept that conversation going while you dropped off for a minute. So you can go back and watch it later. And oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th but I think that, um, you know, anybody in business, as we know, I mean, the, you know, my, my favorite uh, book for business, and I didn't realize I've been doing this all my life before I went into business, uh, is um, my favorite book is How, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And he often talks about, you know, listen. And, you know, not wait impatiently so that you can pop in your words of wisdom. I mean, genuinely listen and be interested in the person that's in front of you. So, yeah. you know, generally I'd like to say that the majority of people around the world are nice people yes. and people, you know, and so um, when you're talking to someone, you know, like I say, if you've seen something that you really enjoyed, give them gratitude, show that gratitude to say, hey, thank you so much. Don't make it into a sales pitch, but they will remember you because you are a nice person and you never know when they may, may need your services over time, you know? Yeah. So um, it's all about, it's all about the other person that you're talking to. You know? Yeah, definitely. I always, I always use the term be, in, be more interested than interesting, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, you know, because, because obviously we're trying to be interesting. We're trying to be intriguing. We're trying to gap, gather people's attention. And what we don't realize is by listening and, and having that conversation, that actually makes us way more interesting than, because, because what you hear in there, so let's say I come to a business and, and, and I can see they need coaching, right? And I just start talking about all the benefits of coaching. But what I miss is the CEO telling the story about how he's struggling maybe with his wife or his kids or his, you know, and that obviously then builds back up into a time and productivity issue. And, and so that builds into a profitability issue. And blah, it goes out like that. And that's, that's very common by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, but it's, but if I just come in with just this, Oh, here's, here's the coaching program. Here's how we're going to do it. You, you, you miss all of that. And so, yeah, I, I totally see that playing out. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's a lot of coaches out there and um, you know, just a few. we need to find, the one that's the right fit for ourselves, don't we? So you know, we're never gonna uh, we're never gonna find the right coach if that coach just tells the world about who they are, what they do, and don't really share an insight into who they are as a person. Because we don't get on with everybody, we don't like everybody, you know, and we shouldn't strive to be liked you, by you everybody. Like everybody right? <laughs> like yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah so, somebody excluded, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, not everyone is going to like you and your business and your business. Sure. So um, you know, give people an opportunity to get to know who you are as a person, and then if they do like you, then they may you know they may buy from you. That's well, the whole to idea. The, not to focus on the coaching, but you know what a great question to ask a coach is: Have you ever fired a client before? Oh, and have you, Johnny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first time I, I did it. I've too, but I've fired clients, definitely. Yeah. yeah. The first time I did it, man, oh, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep the night before. And, uh, and, mm. and yeah, it's my client was like, yeah. You know, I used to be an employer, too. It's as hard as letting someone go and knowing you're going to do that. It, it's really tough. But, uh, no, no, I've definitely fired them. But um, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. So, okay, so we've got, we've got a whole bunch of listeners. There are a lot of startup, you know, early growth companies, that sort of space. What, what are some things they need to do? We've got about probably about 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, we've got hopefully plenty of time. But, uh, but what, are some, what are some things they can do? We want, obviously, people to do some really good, good some good chewables here, um, something they can take away, they can implement in their business today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Just have a quick look at your social media. Have a look at the last sort of nine entries that you've done, whichever platform it is, and look at it objectively and, um, and see, and see uh, which were your best performing posts. 
you know, so have a look at the uh, LinkedIn analytics, the Twitter analytics, Instagram, Facebook analytics, and have a look at, um, you know, when was the best time you posted? Uh, you know, did it receive a lot of comments? You know, that kind of stuff. And, and you know, and look at that and then see how you can improve on that. So, you know, it could be that, um, for example, um, what, uh, one particular lady, she posted on Instagram, it was literally um, a one photograph and um, she, uh, it was a stack of workbooks. And uh, she said, uh, I'm just getting these workbooks together um, and they're about to go through the post, you know, for my members. Um, and, you know, in the workbook, we're going to cover this, this and this and this. People got FOMO from that because they're like, oh, my God, she's got a membership. Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, but she's, you get a workbook through the post. That's incredible. So she was showing behind the scenes. So get a little bit deeper and dirty with the behind the scenes stuff. Don't be afraid to show a little bit about, you know, the lead up to the thing as opposed to the final thing. That's the kind of thing that I would. <laughs> what do you? Oh, hello. <laughs> that's our chief happiness officer, our European chief happiness officer. That's, that's Dakar. We, uh, he's actually a Noosa dog. We, we brought him over from Noosa. Oh, and as we're walking oh. outside, we got, we got uh, another co founder in this networking the social media. Uh, lovely day here in France, as you can see. That you can see where all the Facebook stuff's coming from. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And that and this yeah. is this is FOMO. This is what it's all about. You know, this is exactly the kind of stuff we wanna um we want well, to now show. You're doing business in bare feet, you're famous, of course. So <laughs> But yeah, show you know, showing your dog. <laughs> oh man, that was too close. <laughs> I can almost smell that from here. <laughs> <laughs> But showing the chief happiness officer, I mean, you know, that is wonderful. That That's exactly what it's all about, you know, and business in bare feet is all about, you know, um, you know, working and, and connecting with people that, that, you know, may not have a community around them. So, you know, in that little five minute clip there, you showed behind the scenes, you sh we showed Linda, who was, you know, who is living and breathing the brand because she's on her laptop. You know, so that's the kind of stuff that you can do. Go, go deep, you know, go and show the world the lead up to the thing. Don't show just after. I mean, there's nothing wrong, as I say, with a photograph to say, just done this, but in the lead up to it, you know, don't just run an event and get those testimonials, you know, hire someone dedicated to create live content so that they can, you know, showcase what it is you do. Hire someone specifically to talk to the attendees, not from the conference organizers perspective, but from the attendees perspective. That's the kind of stuff that you can do. And if you're not running an event, you know, that's absolutely fine as well. Anyone who's got a product or a service, you can all create FOMO for your own business. It's about showing behind the scenes in the lead up to, you know, even, even a daily trip to the post office or, you know, you've got an idea of a new, you know, a new product line, you know, asking your community, what are your thoughts, you know, just bringing them in, you know, get them involved. That's the kind of stuff that you can do. Very cool. Yeah. So oh, that's, I mean, that's fantastic. And so one of the things we'd love to see is obviously people's comments around things that they are doing, maybe even, you know, uh, making occasionally just check in on this, on this feed and see if people have responded, but we'd love to hear what people are doing. Maybe even ask you some questions. Um, now the challenge we've got is I can't see the Facebook feed, so I've got no idea if people are asking questions. Um, and so I would have to just, go and find that um <laughs> just one second but but i think i think i think linda's handling all of those that's that's the beauty of having a, a, a small team that we can well, share. I just thought people actually are asking her questions are asking my king questions so i'm just just going to see oh this page hasn't been designed for facebook yet. um okay, so i would have to just go and all right kill that that was me uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, we're not, we're not getting a lot of questions as yet. But uh, one of the things okay. we tend to find on these, and I don't know if you're finding this too, is that we're finding that actually we get a very small watch, but then a ton of people come and look at it later. 
And I don't know if you find that with a lot of when you do live posts and so you're, you're more popular. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, it, it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. And yeah, if anyone has any questions about FOMO, if you want me to look at something, you know, look at something that you've posted on Instagram or LinkedIn um, or Twitter or Facebook, then, um, you know, drop a, po a, um, a comment yeah. uh, in uh, underneath this thread. Um, show me your, um, your um, Twitter bio sorry your twitter profile or whatever however i can connect to you that you want me to look at and uh, and i'll have a quick look at it for you so, so one question that i had to ask you um yeah you know is that i see people post on too many platforms right or do too many things and and there's no congruency to the platforms not necessarily the message is there a too many like i just said too many in my opinion <laughs> Um, and I've heard from from schools that sort of say, well, you know, pick pick your top three and just do those extremely well, um, you know, or whatever it might be. What, what's your recommendation there for our guys? Yeah, I um, I think three is the magic number. So I um, I use Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram um, now, and I pop into Facebook now and again. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, in business, we've got a lot to do, not just the social media marketing side. So the more you take on, the more you're, you know, you're stretching right. yourself thin, really. What a lot of people do is post automatically from one platform to another that's lazy and people will see that. So, you know, if you post automatically from Facebook to uh, Twitter, the Twitter folk will see that it's from Facebook and they'll think, oh, well, you're not even present. So I'm not even gonna engage with you. You can kind of get away from post with posting from Facebook to Instagram, because of course they're owned by the same company. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, when I post something, I will make sure that I put it onto the other platforms, but, I will make it slightly different. Yeah. So um, the other day I created a video natively on my phone. It was just a big shout out to my accountant because I love him, I think he's incredible. So on Twitter, I did you know 280 characters uh, saying, watch this video, this is me telling the world how amazing the mood is um, and this is the reason why. So then that's inviting people to look at the video. Yeah. Then on LinkedIn, you've got 1200, um, I think it's 12, 1400 characters to play with. So I go into a bit more detail because some people would prefer to read rather than watch the video. So I sort of bullet point the few reasons why Mahmood um, helped me. And so he, um, I'm not very good with the, the business numbers kind of thing. And uh, the government said that they could, they would help their small business owners, um, you know, through the lockdown. So Mahmood very, um, very, very kindly offered uh, all of his uh, clients, um, you know, well, he sent me an email and it was like not the dummies guide it was the making guide to getting help from HMRC um, and it was very easy but I really appreciated and taking time to do that and I did actually get some financial assistance which was incredible yeah. so I did all of that and then I uploaded the same video again copied and pasted that text from LinkedIn onto Instagram but gave a little bit more because you've got 2,200 characters okay. to play with there. So, it's so also that the platforms you're working with and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I would, I'd actually love to have another conversation. I think specifically around LinkedIn at some stage. I oh, don't know, okay. I don't know how, yeah, it's it's one of those ones that I know about you, Mark, but I know a lot of people I talk to is like, yeah, we know it's kind of the business version of Facebook, but most people find it an anomaly, and and we kind of joked at the beginning, right? Being a yeah. coach or being whatever, yeah. you can get those two or three connects a day. Hey, thought we should connect and I can bring you 250K. I'm having some great conversations on LinkedIn, but um, there is a lot of rubbish. There's a lot of first time connections that never go anywhere. Well, but I think that's the misconception is that LinkedIn isn't actually useful when there's plenty of people doing really well out of it. And oh, so I think- Oh, completely. Uh, and in fact, in, in fact, I'm actually uh, creating FOMO for a LinkedIn expert um, in uh, in a couple of weeks' time, and I'm actually going to. So she, uh, Shelley Hutchinson, has got a um, a five day challenge, and at the end of the five day challenge, she is guaranteeing that you will be able to get more leads as a result of taking part in this five day challenge. Yeah. Now, um, I've done, um, you know, I've done, uh, I've had, had leads from LinkedIn, 
but um, it's not my main platform, but I would like a little bit more because I know that there are That's conference organizers there. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm actually going to take part in this challenge. Uh -huh. So not only am I going to be a reporter, but I'm actually going to be um, interviewing people and participating in the challenge as well, just to see how much of an impact that five day challenge has. Uh, so that's going to be incredible. So uh, it's free. So I'll um, pop it in uh, a link. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, if we can get all the links and so forth for this. I think some of our guys would love to try something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, as I say, I that, that, yeah. Yeah, and then I can definitely come back and, um, or you can maybe even get uh, Shelly herself if she's free to talk about LinkedIn. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if that's someone that you're connected with, it could do a, a four way conversation. So that would work really well. Awesome. Look, this has been wonderful again chatting with you. Uh, I'm sure we could go all day and, and, and not run out of content, but um, there's that beautiful smile again. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's just great for the social media. It can, it can, yeah. it's just, it oozes out. You know, I, like, I like it when you can say FOMO with a smile. You know? yeah. <laughs> and business is fun. It doesn't have to be boring. That's exactly right. <laughs> but, um, making it's been fantastic. Uh, just, just tell us a bit about how people can find you. Um, connect with you. Obviously, there'll be some links put up, but just we're going to read it out anyway in case someone's just watching the video somewhere random. Yeah, so, uh, well, that's my name, Making Sang, or there. <laughs> so do connect me uh, uh, as a Facebook friend if you'd like to, and on LinkedIn, and on Twitter and Instagram, I'm uh, on as Making T. So that's M A Y K I N G T E A. You can catch me there as well. And of course, we'll see you a lot more on uh, the Sandtracks co-working group uh, as you're coming on board, do some mentoring here. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of questions. On. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, geez, I'm sorry I did that now. So <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. one, day, one day when all this craziness ends, we'll all get together somewhere like London, you know, somewhere fun like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's been a pleasure having you, Mark. Thanks for joining us from France. Uh, I'm in America, making in, in you're in London, right? In in the UK. In Sheffield, in the UK, north yeah. of north of England. North of, oh, you're, oh, you're, oh, sorry. I thought you said you'd moved to London, but um, yeah. So wonderful to have you all on. It's been a it's been a fun conversation. Um, so we look forward to uh, more connects as we go along. Thanks a lot. <laughs>